Welcome back. This is Rashid. I have 23 years of IC design experience with 19 years at Intel and all of that 19 years was uh, in physical design. This is my new um, introduction hook that I'm going to use, start going to use in every video. Okay, so in today's video is about a brief overview of different stages and different steps within physical design. As I said, physical design is quite complex. Um, I'm not sure I will be able to cover everything, but goal is just a higher level, different stages that we do physical design and verification. I'll just, just give you a brief idea of each of those. Okay. So this is what we, we talked about last time. We talk, okay, uh, I'm assuming we have a flat design. Initially, I was thinking of doing a video uh, today on uh, flat versus hierarchical what's the difference between the two tell me in comments if that is something you want to get idea of or what i explained last time was not good enough then i can definitely do a, a five minute video on that with some examples okay so i think that it is important to understand that concept now yeah well yeah you can you can we can go over that later on too uh for, for sure but let, let me know if that is something you want my explanation further so a design is a flat design okay it has an rtl component uh, that uh, we created or we uh, yeah we we created we design um, or even if we took rtl from somewhere but we have to do physical design of that okay uh, that our small soc um, small system has memories inside it has analog it has custom and an ip so that but all these things are instantiated inside um, an, an RTL. Okay, but of course, we, we are not doing synthesis of those, um, no, sorry, physical design of those, but we need to link them in. So we start with this design. Then we, uh, yeah, this is the RTL. So we start, we get into gate level netlist first. So output is a netlist, Nest, netlist is um, a combination of standard cells um, connected together. So it's, it's a logic analysis. There is no layout component yet. Uh, but it also has the logical connection of all these IPs or custom blocks or analog blocks or memories. So everything is instantiated as a cell. Um, of course, the RTL became as a standard cell, but others are also as cells, but much bigger cells. And simply their connection, A is connected to B, is output of one thing is connected to another one, okay? So when we do that SYN netlist, then you will see on at every stage, I have verification there because we have to verify certain thing, the quality uh, of results at each state. We have to go through logs, reports, and everything. All right. Uh, by the way, did I go through what tools we used? Uh -huh. Okay, we'll do that later. So then after that, floor planning. So um, floor planning means, okay, you're pulling that netlist into the tool and you're deciding, okay, um, um, yes, I have to give this shape to my overall design. Uh, it's a square, it's a rectangle, or it has... Um, well, if it's a top level, you know, let's assume it, it's it's a square block. Okay, and let's assume this is a chip on its own. So it's not part of another design, so it doesn't have those weird shapes. Okay, interface, the IOs, inputs and outputs. Um, where are those located? And where we will place these macros. So these macros, all these guys are macros for us. Macros, these are black boxes for us. We are We know their shape. And we know their interface um, at this stage we are not interested what is inside the inside is the duty of responsibility of those teams and we assume everything is really good inside that's really the assumption it's a black box for us so inside no don't care right now physical design point of view right now no not a problem what we are careful about the interface and how it comes together so of course where we need to place these bigger things because we need to put our small standard cell those and, and another. By the way, I will explain standard cell library in a separate video when we get into synthesis. You will see within each stage, we will look into everything 
and i'll explain you all those inputs outputs and also the inside the flow the key component the theory of that you got the synthesis oh sorry floor plan part Sp special cells sometimes uh, for a chip you need to have certain type of cells that fab requires you uh, for different purposes so we, we can talk those in the floor planning class uh, uh, output of that now it, it is in a special we can you can generate a netlist out at the output of every stage but generally at a floor plan stage is more like a layout database uh, like Synopsys used to call Milky Way database or latest with Fusion compilers and all those IC compiler too it's a, um, well, it, it's a different format uh, again, we can later on look into um, synopsis and what are the different uh, commands just for you to know okay, how synopsis does that. Placement, key thing in the placement is okay, these right now in floor plan just lying around here within that area. Okay, placement is now there are, there are standards, the whole chip is divided into standard cell heights. Um, okay, and um, also, and so and a width certain width um, so everything need to be placed with an incremental of certain x and y in both direction so that means that if if things if the cells are not placed on that grid then they're not legalized um, so they need to come and legally placed but well, placement is more than just legal placement it means they need to be placed optimally too you know the two cells which are talking to each other and 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 uh, they need to come sit closer the two flip-flop between which we have a logic they need to be together their drive strength cells need to be optimum uh, so many things um, related to placement they need to be optimum at this stage too so initially a legal placement then an optimized placement and which is covered in both now all your cells macro standard cell everything is placed in within your design okay but what about clocks clocks you you will have a flip-flops on sitting in a corner let's say it's one clock goes everywhere right so you have will have some flip-flops on one corner of the die and other flip-flops on another <clears throat> if this is our die a flip-flop here flip-flop here flip-flop flip-flop flip -flop, right but there is clock comes from this side and it needs to go to this it need to go this and there is it is a long distance and in, in term of clock within a diet it, it, it's a long run so then what happens if we just just connect everything there will be huge delays some of these nodes will never be able to change their value because our clock is what a continuous one two zero right so each node should get a one to zero they can get after a little delay right but once they start then that frequency is ensured so in order to do that, we create some trees, buffer trees regularly, very optimized structure so that this flop and this flop get in a similar latency. All right. Um, so that whole process of optimizing buffers on clock path is called a clock tree. Okay. Once clock tree is there, then first of all, you just route your clock tree, you know, put actual model. So keep in mind, so far, everything is connected but there are no wires okay everything is placed optimally placed cells are selected optimally selected but um, there is no wire you will not see any actual metal going everywhere it's a logical connection we know the output of pre cell connected to the input of cell through just a um, a connection but if you open a layer you will see cells but you will not see a metal so now is the time to route everything and all this is to doing, by the way, tool is doing that. You are controlling physical design tool to do all this for you. And knobs are provided, options are provided, uh, command options are provided, uh, configuration is possible, but all you're doing as a designer, you are driving the tool to do the job that you actually want to do with hand, but you cannot do it with hand because design is so big that's simply not possible okay so now we get into routing now placements are uh, optimal you just tell the tool to route everything you give it constraints okay route by using these many layers or that many layers okay what is the highest layer you want to route at you also can give okay route certain type of you know, modules with certain okay you can say certain nets with certain 
metals for example you can say clocks you need to go to at higher metals those are widers longers they will have less resistance but they can have a higher capacitance so those are the things that you need to consider by the way an important thing during the floor plan i forgot was a power grid um power need to reach to every standard cell and macro and its structure need to be very regular so that you don't have a, a ir drop in the power and you're not giving a different voltage levels to different cells you know it's a consistent voltage across across the die okay so but sorry that was part of the power grid here but again i will look into each of these stages and then we can bring all those important things there routing so tell the tool router now tool put actual metals there is needed to connect once um, mass which is the diffusion to another mass uh, which is also let's say gate uh, then it needs to decide okay now that signal need to go through different vias uh, and cross different metals and then eventually go to the other one so all that metal layers metal structure is placed actually at this stage so initially everything is routed clocks are routed first and then they are set as a don't touch you know tool shouldn't change those because latency and delays for clocks is important so once that is done then everything else is routed again just like placement first step first step is you just do a simple routing ensure everything is routed nothing logically left i mean logical is there but no unrouted uh, segments of the nets and then you know tool is also going to do a, a optimization in routing okay how is the critical path looks like does it need to change metals somewhere okay there is a problem with the routing congestion too many routes here and there is not enough metals available in that particular area there is just too many signal crossing okay what do we need to do about there all that stuff it needs to worry about that okay so then once that is done you want to do as the of course you are checking your layout quality at this stage you want to make sure you don't have shards you don't have opens tool has connected everything few shards are okay we can do it manually but most of majority of the shards are fine no congestion nothing else again all that we will talk in detail later on you do an extraction you uh, extract resistance and capacitance so that you can give that to a static timing analysis tool your timing your setup and hold times so once that is verified and what happens is uh, your layout is in a decent shapes and in order to close every violation setup hold or other uh, max cap max trans those type, those type of things you will have to do some incremental improvements on this database so that's called engineering change order ecos so once you do that your database is good enough you fill it you know this is the area where a uh, lot of places where less metal so you just want to put a dummy metals here and you might have to put a dummy cells so they can be for the uh, for the density you need to maintain a certain uh, metal density there but it could also be the reason um, that you want to make sure uh, the integrity of the electrical components is correct uh, the stress uh, and the defects that can happen right if you have a lot more metals in one place and a lot less on another place um, it can create weird stress in in the die and can crack and all that so for that we use some dummy filling of your chip the the dummy filling definitely those are metals they will have some ground capacitance um, so what we do is we extract uh, everything after fail and we just make sure all the sign of verification is done on the fail database okay and these are all different verification that we do um, so we will go into each of those in a separate videos and once everything um, you run certain other commands in order to prepare a database uh, that you can generate a gds and you make sure different checks are in place you want to make sure all the reviews of the database for each of these flows is done you don't want to make any mistake at this stage if there's a mistake yeah you want to catch right now because once it goes beyond that and um, things will be very expensive the, a small mistake can turn out to be huge in terms of dollar and the time it takes to get the chip to the customer okay after that you send it to a tape-in center that center uh, checks your basic things your files are good and all this they run some of their stuff there which i'm not much familiar with and once they are good uh, and they get a good um, green signal from the design team they send it to a mass shop they create mass for every metal every via everything and once all the mass are created 
and that's an expensive process too uh, at that stage you can still hold your chip you can say oh you have done metal one metal two metal three okay we found something and we think we can improve things by fixing metal four and metal five so you just hold everything there and you can make some changes there you can make changes or to a particular mass there but once it's gone there to the fab okay there's no way back uh, i mean I, I, until i mean if if it started everything okay it's gone so fab takes can take any time between 12 weeks to higher depending upon the priority or all the fab stuff and all that so anyway that's the whole cycle of this physical design i definitely if here what i explained you is looks pretty simple right you go from this when you do this you don't worry about this when you do this you don't worry about that but actually what happens is there are a lot of back and forth loops which i represented with this cloud you you were here and you figure out your placement needed more optimization because it cannot route so go back here your placement you figure out your synthesis results um were not as optimum so you certain paths need to have a better logic restructuring or optimization or something else they need to go back to synthesis even in synthesis you feel that a certain part you cannot fix you have somebody has to um, change the rtl okay so there's a lot of loops back and forth goes between different stages and verification happen on at each stage and as well as the final sign off okay i think i have covered what i wanted to cover in for this video that's it for now see you in the next video